For years after the war ended, a group of Vietnam veterans waged their longest battle. That fight, on behalf of a fallen comrade, has even inspired a movie. David Martin tells their story. You've probably never heard of William Pitsenbarger. He died more than half a century ago at the age of 21, saving Fred Navarro's life, among others. Yeah, if it hadn't been for Pittsburgh, there ain't no doubt in my mind that I wouldn't be here. In 1966, Navarro was a soldier in Charlie Company, which suffered 80% casualties, 80% in a Viet Cong ambush. This sounds like absolute hell. It was people moaning, praying, calling for their mother. Be advised, we are in a tight one down here. Multiple casualties. As depicted in a new movie, The Last Full Measure, William Pitsenbarger, an Air Force pararescue man, descended into that hell. It's all true, and most of it happened. This project started over 15 years ago. Todd Robinson uh, wrote, directed, and produced The Last Full Measure. It's really not about William Pitsenbarger. It's about the effect that he had on the living. I've had PTSD since that day. I've had some very bad times, but I always think of Pitsenbarger. Pitsenbarger was lowered through the jungle canopy to treat and evacuate the wound. As he was coming down through the trees, I just happened to be the one that met him. And we became friends real fast. When you saw him coming down from that helicopter, what did you think? I thought he was crazy. Navarro was wounded, and in the movie, Pitsenbarger drags two dead soldiers on top of him as a shield. He not only pulled those two dead Americans on top of me, he took his armored vest off of himself and put it on my chest. He gave you his flak jacket? Mm -hmm. Now, that's crazy. You got that on for a purpose. Yeah. But he gave it to me. Here we go. Pitsenbarger put nine soldiers on litters so they could be hoisted out of hell. But when his crew signaled it was time for him to come up, he refused. He didn't want to leave us. In fact, at one point, I asked him, why are you here? And he said, because you're here. Todd Robinson was just a kid when this happened. He learned about it 30 years later from the survivors of the ambush. It was just phenomenal to sit with uh, battle-hardened men who would weep openly in Beverly Hills restaurants or on military bases or wherever we might find them. Um, because this was such a powerful experience for them. You made a promise to these guys. Yeah. What was the promise? The promise was that I'd get this story told on behalf of them. It was as simple as that. It wasn't hard to make that commitment to them, although it didn't occur to me it was going to take 20 years. Pararescue jumper. Working on an Combat indie budget, he assembled A-list actors to play the veterans. Peter Fonda in what turned out to be his last movie. Ed Harris, William Hurt, and Samuel L. Jackson, among others. How did you afford all those big names? Well, nobody worked for their price. They were all old enough to know what Vietnam had done to this country and to the soldiers who fought there. To a man, they wanted to pay tribute to those sacrifices that people that they knew made on behalf of the rest of us. No one was more moved at the first screening of the movie than Peter Fonda. He couldn't speak. He literally couldn't talk to me. He was just, the tears were running down his face. Pitsenbarger was killed fighting off the Viet Cong. The survivors recommended him for the Medal of Honor, but it was downgraded to the Air Force Cross. But the story of William Pitsenbarger would not die. What kept it alive? The veterans kept it alive. With the advent of the internet, a miracle happened. And the miracle was that the wives of a lot of these veterans started to connect through email. And they started to realize 
from one another that Pitts never got the medal. Some of the paperwork had been lost. Whit Peters was Secretary of the Air Force in 1999. Some people thought it had been hidden by the Army. Why would it have been hidden by the Army? Well, I think there was a belief that this Operation Abilene, which is where Pitsenbarger was killed, was an embarrassment to the Army because they sent in this uh, Charlie company to go out and find the enemy. And what they found was an ambush. And about 80 percent of that unit was killed or wounded in action. Peters knew injustice when he saw it and set out to fix it. There was some real time pressure because Pitsenbarger's father was dying of cancer at the time. So the hope was if we were going to do this, we would get it done while his father was still alive. Scott, I have cancer. In the movie, Pitsenbarger's father is played by Christopher Plummer. Dying isn't harder than losing a child, I promise you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. There wasn't enough time left to schedule the traditional White House Medal of Honor ceremony. So uh, I was lucky enough to have the honor fall to me. In December of 2000, the ceremony was held at the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio, with survivors and their families flown in from all over the world. After the battle, we never saw each other again till, till then. The place was full to overflowing with people whose lives Pitsenbarger had touched. There are about 300 people there that would not be alive as of 2000 had their parents not been saved by Pitsenbarger. By then, Pitsenbarger's father was in a wheelchair and had to be helped onto the stage. Distinguished visitors, ladies and gentlemen, the loss of his son probably was the worst thing that ever happened to him. And so while he was proud that his son had performed courageously in battle, it was still the worst thing that ever happened to him. Now we have with us today some of the veterans of Operation Abilene. When Robinson reenacted the ceremony for the last full measure, he naturally brought in all the stars for the crowd scene. But he also brought in all the survivors of the battle. There's Fred Navarro, front row, aisle seat. I award the Medal of Honor. The speech the actor Linus Roach gave was the same speech Secretary Peters gave. Bill possessed the ultimate courage. Anyone who has been touched or moved in any... The reenactment didn't need any more emotion than the original. Would you also stand? I wish he was alive and got the Medal of Honor and that I could meet him. If you could meet him today, what would you say to him? Thank you, Pitts. Thank you for saving my life.